Today's presentation, we will discuss Ethernet IP motion programming for AMCI stepper products. Today's agenda, we will first discuss the basic data structure of AMCI's Ethernet IP motion control products. Then we will move along and to discuss how those items are programmed in both RS Logix 500 and RS Logix 5000 programming software. And to dovetail into that, using the RS Logix 5000 software, we will go over a brief discussion of using add-on instructions using RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000 software. And then we will have a brief Q&A session at the end. Stepper motion on Ethernet IP. What products will be covered today? All of AMCI's integrated stepper products on Ethernet IP share a similar programming structure. Whether the product is our integrated all-in-one SMD 23E motor drive and controller, our DC power drive and controller, the ANG1 and ANG1E products, or our AC power drive and controller, the SD17060E. Each one of these products shares the same programming structure. So when we're referring to a product or a component, it can be all or any of these three products. The basic structure of the data that is sent back and forth over the Ethernet IP network is as follows. And this data is sent over to the controller in what we refer to as data blocks. The first data block will be a configuration data block. That data block contains anywhere from eight to 10 words. And those words include, but are not limited to, definition of the inputs. Since each of these products has configurable inputs for various purposes, each one of them needs to be defined as whether it's being used as a homing input, clockwise input, or whatever is available to you. We'll also define the input active state, whether it's an active high or active low input. We define the starting speed, the steps per turn or micro stepping of the drive and controller, the drive current, or any other current control features such as idle current reduction. Once the device is configured and the configuration has been accepted by the device, we then can move along on issuing commands. Those commands can be moves, preset functions, resets, anything of that nature. Anything that is not part of the configuration is covered under the command block. That command block will contain the move type. It will also enable a drive. It'll define the move distance, whether referring to an absolute move or a relative move. Uh, it will also cover the move speed and the acceleration and deceleration of said move. When we think of commands, we often think of uh, basic moves, such as uh, absolute moves and relative moves, as I sp said uh, before. But it's also used for resetting errors and resetting position. And if we have an encoder, uh, it can also reset the encoder at this point. So um, again, if you're looking to do those functions, that uh, process would be uh, taken care of in the command block. The first step to communicate to the PLC uh, when using RS Logix 500 is setting up a message instruction. Um, this is done in a similar fashion, whether you're con connecting to an AMCI Ethernet IP product or any Ethernet IP product within RS Logix 500. Uh, when we do so, we add a message to our logic and uh, hit the click on setup. And this current screen is what would appear on your PC. Uh, any of the setup data that we're referring to can be found in our product manual. Uh, the setup data would include uh, the type of uh, message that we're going to be sending. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a SIP generic. And then also uh, data such as the class, instance, and attribute uh, that is used for the message setup. These are the instances or uh, command structure of the message. And then the number of data words that we're uh, moving uh, either to the device and a message write or as a message read, uh, the data that we're reading from the device. Uh, once we've set up that basic structure of the message, we also have to enter the IP address of the device we're connecting to. And that's managed under what's called the multi-hop tab uh, of that message setup. And that's where we simply enter the message or the uh, IP address of the device, uh, typically um, the default being uh, 192.168.0.50. But of course, it could be uh, whatever you have configured that device's IP address to be. Once we have that message instruction completed, uh, we set up logic uh, similar to what you see here in front of you. Uh, we're doing both a message read and write. 
and the logic has written basically does a read and or write every other scan uh, of that PLC's logic. Uh, once we've done that message, uh, read and write, we've pretty much are ready to start sending commands and or configuration data to the device. That's done here. Uh, when we're doing that, what we're basically doing is taking the data that we're sending to it, which is going to be stored in uh, blocks of data. The configuration and command data is stored in the PLC integer files. And those integer files will be anywhere from 8 to 10 words uh, in the PLC's logic. And what we're going to do is write that data from the integer file. And as you can see here in this uh, sample, we're taking a block of 10 words and copying it to the uh, registers that we set up in the message instruction. Um, and this is similar logic to whether we're doing a move, a configuration, so on and so forth. And as I said, recipes can be stored for each move instruction. So we don't have to, uh, in some cases, we don't have to, or in all cases, we don't have to go in and manually change data or write specific rungs for each type of data, depending upon the data we send to it is the type of move that's done. Any status information that we're going to be getting from the product, whether it's an SMD 23E or an ANG 1E or an SD 1760E is done through that message read. And all that information will be written uh, to those message uh, registers that we set up in the read instruction. Now, when we're programming an RS Logs 5000, uh, things are done a little bit differently. Um, the first thing we need to do is add a gen generic Ethernet module to our PLC. And the, uh, of course, I'm not going to go through the gory details on how to do that. Uh, I'm assuming everybody here has some basic knowledge on programming RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000 and knows how to add a device to a network, so we're not going to go through that setup step. Um, but once we've gone through that setup step and added a generic Ethernet module, this is the screen that will appear. Uh, the first step we need to do is name the device. In this case, we're calling it the AMCI AnyNet IO Stepper Driver. And this would be a typical uh, name for, say, like an ANG1 or an ANG1E. And then we have to set up the uh, communication format. The communication format uh, for our products on Ethernet IP is going to be uh, integer type. Uh, this is probably the most common mistake people use when using uh, our Ethernet products the first time is the default when we open this window is going to be data dint or double integer. And uh, customers often forget to change that to integer. So I just want to highlight that so uh, we don't make that same mistake. And once we've done that, we step along to entering the IP address. This is where we enter the IP address, not of the PLC, but of the device we're connecting to. And then to complete the process of setting up the AMCI Ethernet IP motion product, into the PLC is to complete the process by entering the connection parameters. And these connection parameters, of course, are available in the manual of the product that you are entering. Once we have the device set up, a configuration and command data is copied to the device to the output registers. Um, once we've added that device, as we did in the previous screen, what's going to happen is it's going to create tags under that name, AMCI, AIO. Uh, input registers and output registers. Those are the data registers to which we write to when sending data to the device and look to when wanting to read data from the device, such as status information and position. Sending data to the controller is managed using a synchronous copy instruction. With us, we use a synchronous copy instruction because it, it confirms that all data is being sent to the device all at the same time as opposed to using a, a move instruction where it may act upon a word prior to receiving all the data, the synchronous copy takes care of that uh, issue. Moves and configuration data are stored in registers and predefined tags. You know, this is one of the benefits of using RSLotus 5000 is it allows us to create data tags for each type of execution we're trying to accomplish, whether it's a absolute move, a relative move, a preset command, so on and so forth. We can create those predefined tags with said names, such as you know, absolute move, which contains all of that information the data block requires that's going to be sent down to the device. So it's a very simple and very clean way of setting up data uh, in the PLC. And it also makes varying and changing data in the PLC easy, because even if I'm not familiar with what the entire PLC program is doing, I can look to those data words, say absolute move position one, and change that position value and only that, and know exactly what I'm changing, and then it's going to act accordingly. 
Now, when we're also using the RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000, we have the ability to use what's called add-on instructions. Add-on instructions are used to simplify programming. They also allow us to add standardization because my logic, because the add-on instruction is basically pre-canned or pre-configured software coming from the manufacturer, in this case AMCI, every time I use that add-on instruction or use an AMCI Ethernet Motion product in any of my programs, it looks exactly the same. I'm not trying to copy it from an old program or rewrite it next time I do a different program and hope that it looks the same from the last one. It's standardized, it's repeatable, and it's familiar. Again, it allows us to reuse code. I don't have to recreate code every time I'm doing something. And it also reduces documentation because with add-on instructions, I can create a function block with names and data entry points that make sense instead of it just being you know, enter a value here, enter a value there, integer value this, hex value that, I can title it. It says, move to this position, jog speed, acceleration value, deceleration value. So it's very intuitive. All of our AOIs are available in our tech library for each product. And currently, they are found in a sample program. So for example, if you're looking to look for add-on instructions for our SD17060E drive, you would simply download the sample program for the SD17060E, and within that zip file, you will find the folder with, that includes all the add instructions for that product. It allows you to add the device in the same manner, whether I'm doing SMD23E, SD17060E, the add on instructions are essentially the same. I would import the, the add on instructions to my program. To do so, I would simply go to the add on instruction tab within my logic click on import add-on instructions, select that folder that I downloaded uh, when I downloaded the sample program from the AMCI website. And then once I've done that and completed the import, I now have a complete folder of add-on instructions for my AMCI products. As you can see here, it's a very extensive list, absolute moves, configuration, homing, jog moves, which we title manual moves, and uh, something even more complicated, such as registration moves, all can be handled and managed with add-on instructions. So what does that look like in our code? Not to go through all the gory details of how we get to this particular step. You're all familiar with ladder logic programming. But as you can see, once we basically do is we create a run of logic. In that run of logic, we have a certain condition that occurs. Um, in this case, we are using an equal statement and some other conditioning bits. And when those go true, we're going to execute this relative move command. All of that logic is handled behind the scenes in the add-on instruction we imported. And as you can see, it's very easy to understand what we're trying to do here with this particular rung of logic. We enter in the target position, the position we, we wish to move to, the program speed and steps per turn at which we're trying to move the motor at, and the acceleration and deceleration parameters. And that's it. So as you can see, it's a very simple way to execute and also to understand what type of motion we're trying to execute in that logic. So what are some of the benefits of AMCI motion products versus other solutions? Well, first off, as I explained at the opening, is we use a standard data format, which reduces learning curve amongst all products. So whether you're using our all-in-one integrated products or either one of our stepper drive controller integrated products, the logic is the same, whether I'm using add-on instructions or simple copy instructions, it's the same. So once I've learned one, I've learned them all. There's no third-party programming required. Uh, many of the products that are out there uh, that are not AMCI products require to use some sort of third-party interface to either do the commissioning or, in some extreme examples, all of the programming, uh, which is then stored in the device, and the only thing the PLC does is say go or no-go. If I need to make changes, I need to bring another PC out there, make those changes, store them, so on and so forth, which can be very problematic if I have many setups that I need to do in such applications such as setup axes and the like. We use a simple data structure, which we had gone over previously, which allows simple programming. So in most cases, you know, if I'm comfortable, I don't even really need to use the add-on instructions if I'm only doing one or two move types. I simply set up my copy instructions and my logic, and I go. We have a complete library of add-on instructions. So if I want to take advantage of those add-on instructions, I can go to the AMCI website and download them. Everything that the device can do is available with an AOI. We are also the only stepper motion company in the Encompass program, which means 
When you purchase an AMCI product, you know it's going to work well with your PLC as it exists. There's not going to be any games when it comes to trying to integrate it into your PLC or your PLC logic. And we also have over 10 years experience of stepper motion on industrial networks, which means we're not new to the game. We've been doing this for a long time and have a lot of experience doing it. Thank you for attending today. And if anyone has any questions, I will answer them offline as presented. Thank you again and have a good day.